Guys, it is time for another art video. Okay, you can still hear me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? Today, we are making an inverted Mario. Now, I have done this before. If you followed me on here or if you followed me over on TikTok, I did an inverted Charmander last time, which I ended up selling and then sort of got in trouble for it, so I'm not going to sell this one, okay? <laughs> I thought I was doing a favor. I thought I was making this cool-ass art piece. Um, this one will not be for sale. Today, I'm making an inverted Mario. If you have an iPhone, you can go into settings and go under accessibility hit display and there's a setting in there called classic invert. Now, when you hit that, everything on your phone is gonna be inverted colors. Black becomes white, blue becomes red. Like it's just, if you look at a color wheel, it's like the opposite sides, you know? I think it's a really cool art idea. And who doesn't love Mario? I originally started this project, uh, oh man, two months ago, before I went to Vegas and Austin. Guys sort of did a little bit here, did a little bit there. There were some failures that sort of like really turned me off. I ended up going back to it and I finally finished it. But when you watch this, you can be like, why is there so many fails? Why was it not a successful print and that stuff? I I've learned my lesson now. This was also an expensive piece. In this video, I don't tell you the price. So I'll tell you now, this came to over $400. When I started this, I just got my printer and I bought the most expensive resin. I thought you could only use this resin and it was a hundred dollars a bottle. And I went through four bottles for this project. So 400 bucks. Okay. Enjoy this guys. This is the inverted Mario piece. So this art piece is going to start the same way that a lot of the others do in our 3D printing program called Chidu Box. So what I've done is I've loaded in as many parts of Mario as I possibly could that will fit on our build plate in one go. Now it's estimated this print is going to take over nine hours to print, which isn't that bad. However, nine hours later and Unfortunately, this was a fail. Now, the reason this failed was I didn't actually make the support strong enough for the size of this piece. But as you can see, everything else worked perfect. So I removed those and I loaded in all the other pieces that weren't printed yet. And this time it was a success. So on this print, we actually got his hands. We did his elbow sockets again. We did his pupils and the letter M on his hat. Okay, so it looks like we got a failed print here. At least one side. We got his hair, which worked. I think it's a shoe. This is my fourth bottle of resin. These are hundred dollars each. I hope it. I hope it looks sick. We'll see. Still got five hours left, and it's been going for five hours. All right, it's next morning. So it did fail. The hat failed. Hair is a toss. Oh god, that doesn't look good. We're gonna pop this out and see if it's all failed. But the hat for sure did. So the hat's no good. We'll have to reprint the hat. The hair looks okay. This is usable for sure. We got the two shoes. The two shoes worked out. I think it's elbow or shoulder. Really, it's just the hat that failed on this. It's not too too bad. Nope, spoke too soon. The shoe failed too. That's how it should be. And because this lifted, so that failed too. So we gotta do the hat and then another shoe. So that last failed print just cost us another eight hour print. So we're redoing the hat and one of the shoes. The shoe failed and the hat failed. Nothing else will fit. See you in eight hours. Almost 10 hours later. Yes. We got a successful print. Look at that. So we got his hat and his left foot. And still enough resin to do the final print, which is his entire head. I might redo his hair, because you can see this was almost a failed print, but it held on. I wouldn't need to, like it's it's usable. I just have to sand it, but we'll see if it fits on the build plate. I decided to reprint his hair just because the other one was sort of failed. So this print was gonna take just over 10 hours. It's gonna be his head and his hair. 30 minutes left, this has been going for 11 hours. Good though, so his hair is much better. And his head is super clean too. Yes, okay, it's done. Almost exactly 12 hours. We got the hair now, which is much better than the first print. We got his face. That should be the last parts we need. I could redo his hat. That's gonna be probably another seven hours. I don't know if I, uh, let's see. I don't know if I have enough resin either. Let's take this off the plate, check out all the parts together. It's so good. So I put holes in his eyes, eyebrows, and mouth, and that's just so air can get in and out. Also, resin can drain. That was just for the printing process. Those will all be filled next. Pretty crisp. Obviously, we're gonna sand this. You can see where the light is reflecting. It's not smooth. There's our Mario head. We got the rest of his body in there. We gotta do all. Actually, let me show you the hair. This is the new hair. One nice solid piece. This was the one previous. I was, I could save this by using some UV resin, sanding that down, but I don't know. I had space in the build plate, so I'm like, I might as well just do a nice clean one. There we go. <laughs> now Mario's got his hair. Okay, sick. And then his hat. There's our Mario head. His hat. Pop the hat on too. I feel like we're probably gonna sand a bit of stuff. Next step, let's 
clean all these guys off. As always, I began to post-process this piece. So first, I had to give it a bath in isopropyl alcohol, as you can see here. And this is just to get all the slimy, uncured UV resin off. Next, I post-cured it under a UV black light for honestly about two minutes. And then it was time for the most tedious process out of all of these pieces that I do, the sanding. I started off doing the hat just to get rid of all the support lines. And I used the drill for this with some sandpaper. I quickly realized that it wasn't actually working as well as I thought. So I went back to doing it by hand. This is the process that I need to learn how to expedite because not only is it exhausting to do, but it takes hours. And this is by far the longest sanding I've ever had to do on a piece. Once it was all smooth, it was time to see if everything fit. And unfortunately, I now needed to sand all of the joints so they were small enough to fit inside of its sockets. This process took me, uh, honestly, uh, like a full day to do. I'm not even exaggerating that. It's very small pieces, and I had to like really go in with rough sandpaper and really make sure it was just snug enough. But it's times like this where passion really carries you through. <laughs> and this right here is our mini Mario without any color so far. Honestly, it's like the size of a baby. It's pretty big as you can see in comparison to my hand. Next, it was time to paint. Now, I wanna take you guys through this process because if you're gonna do inverted art, it's important you know how to actually get the paints. So these are the colors of Mario when he's in an inverted world. I've gotten some variants here, so it's not all of these colors. This right here is cobalt blue, and this is the color of his skin. So when I invert this, you can see it's actually sort of skin color. This next aqua color is gonna be red. This is gonna be the color of his hat and his arms. Next, I got this camel mustard color, and this is gonna translate over to blue, which are his overalls. And then we got this light blue, which turns into brown for his shoes. So essentially, we are making this. Just a heads up, this part could be pretty confusing. So, so you're gonna have to go back and forth to the inverted camera, back to normal, back to inverted camera multiple times, just so you don't actually paint the wrong piece. All right, let's get painting. We're gonna start with his head. So we're gonna pop that off and take off all of his features. Ditch the hair pop out his eyeballs. We're gonna paint this entire piece cobalt blue, which when inverted is Mario's skin color. And we began painting. I will say I'm using a heavy based acrylic paint here. It's probably the last time I'm gonna do that because not only do you see the brush strokes super easy, it takes a lot longer to dry too. So when I painted this, I had to make sure that I really thinned out all of the layers and that's because it was a thick based acrylic. It would clump up and if I let that dry, it would actually look like a blemish. So you really have to spread this out very thin and do multiple coats. And once that was done, I hit it with some clear matte finish, and this is gonna protect it from chipping and also UV light. The only problem was this was like almost an empty can, and when I tipped it upside down, overshot it, but since it was matte and not gloss, you actually didn't really see it. But yet another lesson learned. This, this whole DIY was full of lessons. <laughs> Next up were his overalls. Now this was gonna be painted this camel mustard yellowish color. When inverted, of course, you know it's blue, but I don't wanna show you guys any more invertedness until the final piece. Next was his shoes. So we're gonna paint those brown, or in this case, light blue. Now the interesting thing about Mario is his hair is also brown. However, his facial hair and his eyebrows are black. I didn't realize this until I did this DIY, so his hair is actually gonna be matching his shoes, but his mustache is gonna be a different color. Next, it was time to paint his hat and his sleeves. And this is this aquamarine green, which translates over to red. Three, two, one. Here we go! Next up were his hands. And for this, we use black 3.0, which is the blackest black paint you could buy. This also dries very matte. And of course, this is gonna be these nice bright white gloves because this is the darkest dark you can get. We also painted the whites of his eyes black. 
And then since Mario has blue eyes, we painted his pupils this yellow mustard camel color. Lastly, the emblem on his hat is actually black as well. Once everything was nicely painted, it was time to coat it in a fresh can of matte UV finish. So just like the first can, this is going to offer us some protection to our paint, but also the sun won't actually dry out the resin. Now, I actually put this stuff on all of my art pieces, whether it's canvas or even a 3D resin print like this. I either use a dead flat or a matte finish or I use a gloss, depending on the look that I want to do. But I will always, always apply a top coat just to protect our piece. Put in his shoes just to see if they would stand up and boom. Next, I popped on his neck, connected the hands to the arms, put those in the socket, popped on his hair, and then connected his head, added the hat, and popped on that famous mustache. Next, I put in the whites of his eyes and the pupils. About 90% done. We just have to add the pupils, so the whites of his eyes. And for this, I'm actually gonna use a UV resin. I also filled in the M of his hat emblem, and this is gonna actually be green, or aqua green, similar to his hat. And this right here is our final completed inverted Mario. And when flipped, all the colors are right. I love it. It's worked out perfectly. It's exactly what I wanted. Okay, and here's the man of the hour. I love it. I absolutely love it. So this is made with like the highest quality UV resin. This is a $400 piece. However, I know I could have made this for under 200 bucks. Stores have been shut, so I haven't been able to get the paint. So this paint is actually from Austin. But just in general, this is a very unique piece, okay? This video, I honest, honestly, I showed you probably 10% of the sanding that went into this in this video. Um, this took me like three days of sanding. It's exhausting, but most of that work went into the joints. I was so exhausted at the time, like, oh, I don't wanna do this anymore, but like, this is gonna be a really sick piece. So I finished it and it turned out to be a really cool piece. And it's all removable too. Like I could take his hat off, I could take his hair off, his mustache. I wanna leave you guys with this, okay? With any art piece, with a number of the things I've done over the past year, art being the main focus here, I've had a lot of fails. Whether it's the paint, whether it's the sanding, whether it's the failed prints, dropping a piece and breaking it, silicone not curing, resin not curing properly, running out of material halfway through, I've made every mistake in the book. But the great thing is, is with every single one of those mistakes, they've turned into a lesson that has made me a better artist. So if you guys are doing your own art pieces or you're gonna try one of the things that I've shown you, do it, but expect fails along the way. And when a fail pops up, don't be like, oh my God, I'm a terrible artist. This didn't happen for Dan or this and that. Every fail has happened to me along the process. And this video was a great example, which is why I left them all in. When I had a failed print, it was another 10 hours and another like $30 worth of resin. Not only was it a financial burden on me, but it also took a lot of time. And that gets to you, that gets frustrating, but just know the end goal is gonna be this really cool art piece that no one's gonna have that you made. That's the coolest thing. Every time I look at this guy, I'm gonna be like, this piece cost me 400 bucks. At the time, I couldn't get the paint. So when I was down in Austin, I bought the paint. And there's so much more to art in terms of the build, the story behind it, the fails, and just like making the piece, you know? <laughs> Anyways, there you guys have it. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up because it will help my channel with the algorithm. If you guys want to see more 3D resin art, I've got a ton of that stuff over on my TikTok, which is at Danocracy. We've got new long form art videos coming out every single week, and I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys. Oh, and if you guys want to see a picture of this, go over to my Instagram, at Danocracy. Okay, see you guys later.